Hello, everybody. Hello, YouTube. Hello, art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M. And I'm back with yet another video. This should be a fun one. I hope you like it. Um, I debated as to whether or not I should like start doing these, but I said, you know what? What the hey? Uh, let me go ahead and do it, and we'll see what happens and how it goes. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's having, you know, a marvelous weekend or what's left of it. Uh, and hope everybody has a marvelous Monday. So I... Let's see when my last video was two days ago. So I needed to take a day off <sighs> for work. Uh, my Saturday was a a mess. I don't know if it had to do with the full moon or not, but whatever. Um, and I say that, you know, people kind of blame weird stuff happening on the, on stuff like the full moon or whatever. And this video might partially have to do with that. So we'll, we shall see. Um, today I'm going to, uh, start a new thing. So I said in my community post here, um, the last one that says more homework, you know, nerd face and a cup of coffee because we all need, we all need that. Uh, always, always have a pot ready. Um, Twin Peaks intro, uh, going to be analyzing this and making an announcement in a video this evening. Stay tuned. Okay. So I'm going to be analyzing the, uh, opening credits to Twin Peaks. I found a good video, uh, here on YouTube and I, I've decided that I'm going to get more into David Lynch's work, specifically Twin Peaks. Yeah, I know he's, but he's got a bunch of other movies, Mulholland Drive and uh, what is it? Dune and, um, all these other very popular movies. He's a very popular, um, film director and a lot of people are big fans of his and his movies and everything. Um, and he was very successful uh, as a director when he started doing Twin Peaks in like the very tail end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s. And I was a little girl at the time and I saw it on TV. I sure did. Um, but of course, I didn't understand it at the time because I was such a, a young child, you know. Uh, but here we are. I'm revisiting it again. And I started watching the first episode last night and like just a couple of minutes in i realized oh yeah i want to do um a twin peaks analysis and do i have one here oh yeah david lynch on the origins of bob uh gonna be talking about that so i'm just you know when i said make an announcement that's the announcement i want to do a twin peaks series there's like 30 episodes altogether. the first season is like eight episodes and the second season is 22 episodes and at the time when this was on tv this was like a phenomenon it, everybody was like you know who killed laura palmer and that was like the big question right he's good he's i, I mean revisiting the twin peaks show um i mean now i can now, again i was a real young kid at the time i was a, i was a child but like now looking back i can see why it was so popular he knew how to hold an audience's attention and like the mystery and the intrigue and like the show didn't really make much sense um because we're dealing with david lynch so um <laughs> his first film was like eraser head and he's care whatever he was doing in eraser head i think he's carried that through like all the way through like all of his other everything else he's done after eraser head and because eraser head was obviously such a huge inspiration and influence on Stanley Kubrick, um, Kubrick realized and saw that David Lynch is a genius. Okay. And he picked up on that and made everybody watch Eraserhead who was working on The Shining. And there's all those radiators at the Overlook Hotel. Um, I think these two were like bouncing ideas off of each other and just trying to save the world and the and and all the people in it in their own way through art through cinema okay both steven not no oh, no 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 not steven sorry um stanley both stanley kubrick and david lynch were trying to do that 
Um, so I am going to be doing like, you know, I'm on YouTube. Um, partially because I was inspired by all these wonderful creators. Some of them are in my channels page, um, that do their own videos about reality TV. My favorite is Alexander Rogers, uh, and, and people like that who do a breakdown of like episodes of, you know, shows that a lot of people like, but they're centered around like the antics of, of, um, you know, various groups of, like, like the, like the Real Housewives franchise, um, and Alexander Rogers does the Real Housewives of Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, Beverly Hills, and etc. And he's really good at it. Um, he's been at it for a while and he's one of my inspirations. I might even like add him in the description. Like I would love to get his attention. And you know, if you, if you, if you see this Alex or any of my other videos, I would love any advice you have as a like veteran of, of YouTubing, um, to how to spruce up my channel. It's a damn mess. I know that, but I mean, I don't know how to fix it. And I of course can't afford to like pay for professional advice or anything but i want to do twin peaks episodes kind of like the way alexander rogers does like episodes of the real housewives uh and and or all the other shows that he covers um and i'm gonna start this one this is gonna be my announcement and my first like little attempt at analyzing uh twin peaks and the lynchian imagery uh, within. So let me do my church announcements first. Um, returning viewers, thank you for returning. New viewers, thank you for being new. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. Each and every last one of you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos. Uh, and when you subscribe, not if, but when you subscribe, please don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you can be uh, alerted uh, when I create, or what is it called, drop a new video. Um, and I've been going shining crazy lately, and I'm going to keep going shining crazy, but I also want to go Twin Peaks crazy um, with my little collection of videos here. And yes, I've got a lot of stuff I want to do and I'm going to try and do as many as I possibly can. You know, people like, again, people like Alexander Rogers, they do videos every day. I wish I, I wish I had that kind of like determination and resolve. Uh, I just don't, <laughs> but I, I do my best. Right. Um, so also in the course of going through the Twin Peaks stuff, I'm going to be referring back to this page, the, uh, the, the TwinPeaksFandom.com, TwinPeaks.Fandom.com. I'll leave the, I'll leave the link in the description because it'll just, you know, give you stuff like this, people, places, objects, timeline, the supernatural aspects, um, and what have you. I'm not really concerned with like production stuff. I just, I'm just concerned with the finished product, the finished work by the artist behind the scenes. Also not too concerned with behind the scenes, but, um, you know, I, I just, I'm, I'm going to use this page f just so I don't have to make notes about everything. They already did it for me. People, places, objects, and whatever, right? So I'm going to leave that in, uh, the description. I, I comb through this and the Wikipedia pages, uh, for Twin Peaks, um, characters and whatever. Um, David Lynch is trying to save the world. I really believe it. I know that sounds crazy like crazy, 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 crazy. But, you know, and again, I will prove it in my own way. I will put forth my own evidence, arguments, whatever. I'm going to try and review, like, yeah, I'll do reviews of uh, each and every one of the episodes of the original first two seasons, right? Not the one that recently happened in like 2017. I'll get to that later, but I just want to deal with the original, like from the late, like, what is it? 89 through 92. I think that's when it aired. Um, there's a lot in those 30 episodes. So, uh, stay tuned. So I don't know how I'm going to do it or like what schedule I'm going to do it on, but I'm going to do it. So anyway, let's get into it. Let me, let me just get into it right now. Uh, again, 
I think there is a huge um, connection between David Lynch and um, Stanley Kubrick, right? So we start off with this. Okay, let me try to not get a copyright strike. Shit, that's the last freaking thing I need. I'm, and I already left this in my community tab, so you can go watch this on your own, right? Um, the opening shot of the opening credits of Twin Peaks, the original series, is this bird. Okay, I don't know what kind of bird this is. Absolutely no clue. But the bird is like perched, sitting on this little piece of wood with the needles sticking out of it. The pine, I think these are pine needles. And behind it, it's blurry, but you can kind of tell that it's a lake or something like that behind the bird. Um, and then, of course, there's that beautiful music that plays during the opening credits that I can't uh, duplicate for you here because again, copyright. Um, that's why I put it on mute just in case. Don't want it to start yelling, uh, without my <laughs> having turned it on. But so this bird is here. Why is this bird here? Um, well, birds are pretty huge in mythology and folklore and legends and superstition. Okay. So, um, even right in the first episode of the show, they mention birds, okay? Um, and the birds are known, or, you know, the superstition is that birds are omens of in coming, uh, approaching death. So, and there is a bird associated with Laura Palmer's death in the show. So that's the first thing we see here. And that's Lynch, David Lynch, telling us, yeah, you're about to see a show, a presentation, a story that has to do with death. And this bird is here to let you know that. Okay. Um, so there's that. And then from the bird, we fade into a shot of a building that has been identified in the Twin Peaks literature as a sawmill. Okay, so you see these kind of barracky looking buildings. Uh, you see all this steam or, or smoke or whatever it is coming from these smokestacks. Um, so sawmills, what are sawmills? They're places where wood gets cut up, like trees get turned into boards, planks, um, two by fours, what have you, I don't know, uh, lumber uh, gets gets broken down into things that are used for building in the man-made world at sawmills. And of course, this place, Twin Peaks, I'm not even sure where Twin Peaks is. It's, I think it says like in the fandom or the Wikipedia pages, it says that Twin Peaks is located in the Pacific Northwest. Now, I don't know whether that's Washington State or like Oregon. Um, I think it's Washington state. What am I saying? Because like in the story, like they make runs across the border to Canada. Um, so yeah, it's probably Washington state. What am I saying? Um, but you know, they say the Pacific Northwest. Okay. So it's now I finally took me a minute, but yeah, it's Washington state. So logging is a huge industry up there and Twin Peaks seems to be, at least I'm not sure right away right now. But it seems to be a logging town. So David Lynch is showing us this. Again, this building is identified as a sawmill. I'll just go ahead and accept that. Um, take that. Uh, take their word for it. The people who wrote that down. And you see, like, this is industry. Okay. So like I said, wood gets broken down into, into boards and planks and what have you. And those are the building blocks of... The buildings that surround us all in our daily lives, okay, houses, office buildings, uh, stores, theaters, hotels, um, schools, like all of those buildings, even if it's a brick building, like it still needs wood for to do the framing to, to set up the building project. So what is the message here that this this story about death, you remember the bird? It takes place in a place that is a beautiful place, naturally. There's so much greenery and everything. But this place is dedicated, and this place probably exists 
directly as a result of the fact that it's a logging town okay that's how that's how a lot of towns like started they, there was an industry that where everybody worked everybody worked at that factory or everybody worked in that industry and like a town was built around that and then the ghost towns like that are abandoned um they're they're abandoned because that industry or whatever is like obsolete or the the company the factory that was there went out of business and slowly you know people moved away and had no reason to like live there anymore because there was nowhere to work okay so that that seems twin peaks seems like that kind of a place um so an industry i'll just go ahead and and say right now at this point i think that david lynch is being critical of industry um because it's exploitative okay it's exploitative it's it exploits not just you know the environment and cutting down all those trees and everything it exploits the people people are exploited by these big um crazy companies and what have you i think i think lynch is making a, a comment on that then there's you know we see that for a little while and the music plays and these are very slow shots like he's you know this the bird thing is about three seconds long and then this these smokestacks and these uh this sawmill that's about like seven seconds long that's quite a long time when you think about it it's not a moving picture he's just saying look at this you know he's saying to the viewer look at this picture right and then he fades into the inside of the building i presume where this machine is either fabricating or sharpening this circular saw and this thing that, that i don't know what it's called is coming down it's sharpening every single tooth of this circular saw and this saw is used to saw through lumber trees wood um and you know as as the you'll watch it it's in the community tab you can watch this on your own it's beautiful i i highly recommend watching this it's only about two minutes and 41 seconds long right and this thing keeps lowering and sharpening every tooth of this saw so these are the tools of industry okay uh these are the things that break down the natural elements that are delivered to this place which is the logs the lumber right um and he and again you watch this you watch this machine sharpening the teeth of this saw blade and then you go to another angle and see the same thing just over from the other side okay for it looks i think it's sharpening the same um, circular saw blade right this is really 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 interesting that this is his opening credits his opening sequence for the show he's talking about the destruction of the environment right away right away and also don't forget like i said there's like so many and look at this even the twin peaks letters are green wow um and there's so many connections between lynch and stanley kubrick um, don't forget in the shining the overlook hotel surrounded by trees and ha as as jack is driving up to the overlook like yes there's mountains and and whatever tree but trees 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 everywhere um you know and those trees are the building blocks of civilization at least the the buildings the houses and and things that we inhabit on a daily basis uh the parameters that have been delineated for us by you know whoever it is the powers that be uh the uh, they they they've created for us uh the boxes in which we live right the the parameters and the limitations of our existence is the buildings that have been created more or less for us we didn't have much of a say in it um we didn't have much of a say us human beings we didn't have much of a say in the way civilization civilization was created and has been maintained more or less since day one like i said since ancient sumer in mesopotamia possibly a little bit before like in the transitionary period between the prehistoric and 
um, again, the Mesopotamian civilizations where it, things like specialized labor and writing was invented. Okay, so we you look at all the sparks flying and whatever. And he's just focusing on this saw, saw being hewn um, or sharpened, the, 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 the teeth of this saw uh, blade being sharpened. And then do we, yeah, there's more sparks. Okay. And then there's another one. This is like a longer saw with different kind of teeth. Look at these teeth. They look like shark's fins, but they also look like waves. Look at these. And I'm not a physicist. Don't ask me about that. But I mean, I know enough to know that like, you know, these scientists and people work with stuff that has to do with wavelengths. So, or this is, I know, I know it's maybe sounds a bit far fetched, but these, um, this particular one, this, these saw teeth, uh, these blades that look like shark's fins or and or waves like water waves they're meant to remind you of the water uh, basically the sea the ocean um, and we'll get to that when I get to that with my analysis of Twin, Pe Twin Peaks so stay tuned for that so this is why I think he's showing us this same thing just a different blade a different kind of blade that makes you think or should make you think of science, physics, um, uh, the water, waves, yeah. And then we get this shot of this log, this enormous log that seems to be on a train car. And it's enormous and it's being held up by these, this inverted, uh, uh, thing here. It looks like two sticks holding up this enormous log that's on this train car and there's a ladder so you can climb up to it. Uh, what's going on here? Why is, is you know, we've, we all know about the log lady in Twin Peaks. I'm going to explore that character. Um, what is up with it? And these three trees behind it. Ooh, and also these trees are, what do we call these kind of trees? Evergreens or, um, I don't know what they're called, but the kind of trees that are always green, more or less, like they, um, they seem to be green in perpetuity. I don't know what that's called, and I'm, I can't look it up right now, but I wish I was smarter, but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so trees, trees that seem to always be green and in, in a constant state of life right? And this big ass log, um, that is preparing you for what you're going to see in this show basically is, is what I, I, I think David Lynch is doing here. So he just showed us the saws and the blades being sharpened. Okay. Um, are, are these, so he shows us, hold, let me, let me recap real quick. The bird, the harbinger of death, the factory, the sawmill, okay, uh, big bad industry ruining people's lives, uh, and then the instruments of death, these saw blades, and they're being sharpened, okay, kind of ominous if you really think about it. Um, so yeah, and then we get this big ass log. So is this log? The fact that it's no longer a tree that's attached to the earth is this symbol of death of some kind. Is it some other symbol? I have my ideas. I want to save them for when I get into analyzing the show and doing, you know, doing what I do. Those of you who have been here before, you know, you know what to expect. But, <laughs> um, you know, what's going on? This is a huge symbol, like literally and figuratively, a huge symbol. And this enormous, enormous tree trunk is being held up by these two little sticks. <sighs> and the enormous tree trunk, because again, it's not a living tree anymore. It might represent, again, more um, death. Okay, moving on. So what do we see after the log? We see this. Okay, so I guess this is the, you know, Twin Peaks city limits or whatever. And it's beautiful. There's like this cloud. There's this fog. 
that seems to be enveloping everything it says welcome to twin peaks and there's two like i guess mountain tops side by side surrounded by all of these evergreen trees on all sides it says welcome to twin peaks and it says population 51201 mm, interesting uh and again we see more trees on the side of the road and this is a mountain road it's beautiful this nature is gorgeous but there's also something ominous about this and i know it's foggy and the pacific northwest there's a lot of rain and it's kind of gloomy looking but i think that david lynch like amped up the gloom factor with these images because you know look at this this sawmill it's a pretty sunny day it's a pretty bright picture but there's still like this soot that seems to cover the picture um and then this right this here um oh gosh yeah there we go um twin peaks this there's 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 this extra graying that he uses at least in these opening shots the opening credits of the show and i said welcome to twin peaks population 51201 if i'm not mistaken so 5 plus plus 1 is 6 plus 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9 Keep that in mind for later. Uh, and we just see the entry into um, the town. It just, you know, with these green letters. You know, green is an important color. Kind of like in The Shining, Jack Torrance's color is green that he usually wears when he's not wearing Wendy's colors. Anyway, so we see this, this mountain road on approaching Twin Peaks. So it also gives you like this idea that this place is isolated. It's not a big metropolis. It's a small town. You know, 51,000, yeah, that's a small town. You know, even by modern standards. Um, and then we get into this, this picture of this waterfall, you know, um, with the water falling from this top of the waterfall down into, what is this, a river, right? And he emphasizes what seems to me there seems to be a little bit of ice around it or snow packed snow or whatever he emphasizes like the whiteness of the water falling like the foam created by um the water as it's falling from the top downward into i guess this river or stream or whatever uh into the waterfall now why is he doing that and why did i mention the population and I added up all these numbers to nine and then I I said okay you know this here I when I do the shining I keep kind of reminding you that my belief is my opinion is that Stanley Kubrick is messing with mythology and and even his Wikipedia article on Stanley Kubrick says that he was an avid fan of all kinds of mythology, I think specifically, or, or with emphasis on Greek and Roman mythology, if I remember that correctly. I think David Lynch is doing something very similar here. Uh, we got, you know, I, I put up the song the other day. You can go to my community page and check it out, like scroll down until you find it. The Anthrax song, Black Lodge, which is definitely inspired by this show, Twin Peaks. Um, so there's the Black Lodge in Twin Peaks, and it's the place where, like, Agent Cooper goes and, you know, gets clues and whatever about stuff. I, I'm not sure yet, but that's the impression that I get, like, from what I remember from watching the show as a child. And it's this place where nothing makes sense. Uh, people talk backwards. Um, it's weird, just weird. Uh, but, you know, as I was reading these pages and the fandom pages and Wikipedia, um, what it says is the way to get into the Black Lodge, if you're like a mortal, right, uh, is you have to go to this place in the forest uh, that's surrounded by a ring of trees. And inside of the ring of trees, there's this pool with like stones around it. It's not a big pool. It's a small pool. And there's like a black liquid or substance in that small pool. And that smells like burnt up, like motor oil or whatever. Okay, cool. Um, and in order to that, that place becomes the threshold between the world we know and 
the lodge okay and the only way to enter as a mortal is if you walk into the forest and find this circle of trees and find this little black pool of used up motor oil you have to be there in order for that place to become an entry into the lodge uh during the conjunction of dr luke i hope you're listening uh during the conjunction of uh, jupiter and saturn okay <laughs> yep um and that's how you enter as a mortal if if it's like if it's not a mortal they can come go in and come out whenever they want to but as a mortal you have to wait for that uh planetary conjunction like astrologically uh jupiter and saturn and listen that's not a coincidence they put that in the show for a reason okay i haven't even watched the whole thing haven't even gotten through the first episode and i can tell you already if that's the requirement for getting into the lodge okay that means something and this foam that we see here listen um jupiter jupiter's jupiter jupiter is the roman name for zeus and saturn is the roman name for chronos uh the 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 uh, roman equivalents for greek gods okay so jupiter um and Saturn, for that matter, are usurpers. I think, if I'm not mistaken, in the mythology, Jupiter ends up killing his father, Saturn. Okay. And before that, like Saturn killed his own father, who was Uranus. Okay. And I, do, I, I don't remember like the Roman name for it, or the Greek name rather for Uranus. But so Uranus, <laughs> please don't laugh. Please don't laugh. It's not funny. But... <laughs> uh uranus is so the conjunction between uh the father and son uh, the planets that represent or are named after these father and son gods uh from greek roman mythology whatever um they have to be conjunct they have to be like together uh, i'll look up conjunction some other time in order for the threshold the entry into the lodge to open up okay cool like you know uh, I think one of these is the god of war and the other one is the god of time. Yeah, this story in Twin Peaks has a lot to do with war, has a lot to do with what you've maybe heard of, heard uh, uh, referred to as the military industrial complex. Okay. And there's plenty of evidence for that throughout the show. We shall see it. I shall go over it. Don't worry. It'll be fun. Um, but anyway, so when those two planets are in conjunct, the father and son planets, then you can enter as a mortal, this, uh, lodge, the black lodge, I guess. Um, the thing they don't tell you, the thing that David Lynch doesn't tell you, he mentions Jupiter and Saturn and they have to be conjunct. Okay, cool. However, so I told you Jupiter kills Saturn and Saturn uh, so Saturn is Jupiter's father and Jupiter kills his father Saturn and before that Saturn uh, killed his own father Uranus or should I call it Uranus just to make it cleaner I don't know um, but so he kills Uranus and Saturn kills Uranus and how does he kill his father how does Saturn kill his father Uranus by castrating him okay that's that's the method that that saturn uses um and i forget what uranus is the god of but i'll look it up eventually but when saturn kills his father by castrating him the white substance that emerges from uranus's freshly cut um testicles is is like a white foam Okay, and that is said to be the same foam from which the goddess Venus is born when she rides in on, on you know, like a surfer girl. She rides in on that, on that scallop shell and she's born of the sea foam. And that sea foam is actually um, like Uranus's sperm. 
All right, so that's why he's showing you all this white foam coming from this water and uh, waterfall and falling into this stream or river or whatever it is, right? And that's why this sawmill is where it is. Usually, in traditionally at least, sawmills are built near running, flowing water. Okay, so here's here's the foam. Look at all the foam. You know, and they're telling us that Venus comes from that in mythology, right? Uh, and Venus is the goddess of love and beauty and whatever. That would be Laura Palmer. Okay, she's she's the Venus, she's the Aphrodite figure in this show. Now, let's keep it moving, right? And so <laughs> there's more. That's just one little tidbit of what I'm going to uncover for you what I'm going to let you know about as I go through these episodes of um, <sighs> Twin Peaks. 30 of them. It should be fun. It should be a whole bunch of fun. Like I, I mean, I don't know what my schedule was going to permit. I hope and I wish I can do like one of them a week. We shall see. But anyway, so this water is falling. Look at all the foam, 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 foam. Okay. And it, the foam is like, it tr you you transition over he he pans over to the right and we just see this river or stream here and he's focusing on the water rather than the land surrounding the water but reflected in the water what you can see is the trees surrounding this water okay and like i said water what did i say what did i say y'all when i was showing you this uh, the this like wave or shark's fin looking um saw being sharpened it's supposed to remind you of water well yeah what i tell you and then what's reflected in this water is not the sky it's not the mountains it's the trees surrounding the water and the trees are very reminiscent of those damn curtains in the room where agent cooper goes and he sees that little person that talks backwards and the giant and the whole thing um i i think that's what it's meant to evoke the reflection of the trees in this water y'all let me know i've got plenty to say i'm gonna say a lot in the future regarding this we're moving downstream here as you can see um and then we get to the end right ah lordy 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 lord um this is gonna be like a blast and then at the very end like we go from this going downstream okay and there's like superstitions a plenty to do with water like when you see water disturbed like this like these ripples in the water that's supposed to be a bad omen too Okay, and so he's playing with a lot of Native American legends, myths, and or superstitions of various kinds, maybe not just Native American. But at the very end of this opening sequence, we see these two, I guess you could even call them sitting ducks. Okay, like rolling, rolling down this waterway. Um, yeah. Yeah two sitting ducks now it's not birds we don't i mean ducks are birds but we we don't usually use that word in reference to ducks when we say when we see a duck we say oh that's a duck we don't say that's a bird when we see this we say oh yeah that's a bird okay i don't know what kind of bird but it's a bird this one here like y'all let me know is it a woodpecker oh tell me it's a woodpecker please tell me Please tell me this is a woodpecker. Okay, but never mind. But then at the end, so we this is the bookend for this opening sequence. So the first bookend on the left is this bird, which I hope is a woodpecker. And then at the end, we see more birds, but in this case, ducks. Two ducks. And ducks are, um, I don't think they're, they're certainly not birds of prey. Like people hunt ducks they're 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 um game animals okay but the, the, they're birds as well so they book in this opening sequence the first one that i hope is a woodpecker and then these two that are obviously a couple of ducks just hanging out in this stream like uh 
down downstream of that waterfall that we just saw. And I just told you Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Venus. Yes. And uh, and in, in the lodge that you see two Venuses. You see the Venus de Milo and you see the Venus de Arles, A-R-L-E-S. I'll be covering all of that and so much more as I do these episodes. Um, and I'm done with the opening credits. And I want to also, while I'm here, while I'm like just, you know, while I'm doing this, let me cover something else too. Give me one second. Okay. So I said to myself, you know what, since I did the opening sequence, the opening credits for Twin Peaks in this video, I might as well do the end credits too. I think this is for season one. I'm not sure. But this is it, right? This says Twin Peaks end credits. It doesn't identify whether they're like from season one or season two. I don't think it matters. I think this is from season one because like Laura Palmer and her like um, homecoming queen picture is like an icon of this show. And it's supposed to be. She's very pretty. She's young. She's got her hair all dolled up. She's a blonde um, and she's wearing a crown. Okay, so she's, and she's also the murder victim that this whole show is based on. And like I just said a minute ago, I think that uh, Laura Palmer, the character, she represents Venus. Okay, and how Venus has been, in my opinion, or I think actually David Lynch's opinion, how Venus as a figure throughout history has been abused. Okay, we, I told you how I told you uh, where Venus comes from, like her birth. Okay, hello, skis. Um, and then I see this. These are the end credit, and it's just it doesn't change. Like the opening credits is first the bird, then the sawmill, and then um, the blades being sharpened, and then the water, the the waterfall, and then the water flowing downstream, and then finally those two ducks. Okay. Now, with the end credits, it's just Laura Palmer's face, this homecoming queen photo portrait of her, right? Oh, okay, never mind. Hold on. Um, where is the damn thing? Okay. I want to sit, like, get one where we can actually see her face because she's extremely important to this show. Um, and th the way he did this, if this is like, you know, true to the show and what people saw on their television screens in 1990 or whatever, he could have just focused on, like he could have centered the photo of her. And if it's in a frame, he could have included that. And he could have just centered that in the middle of this, um, in the middle of the picture. No, he focuses on Laura's face. He, he, she's smiling. She's very pretty. She's obviously the most popular girl in town and whatever, but there's this, she has these kind of dead eyes, okay, that her smile is not sparkling. She's playing a role. She's playing a role in her life, in her daily life before she dies that she's just not happy with. And again, he could have just shown the photo without all of, it's it looks skewed it's weird right it looks skewed it looks a little bit out of focus but look at this to the left here so that's the lining of the the, the liner and the frame uh that this photograph is framed in and the frame it's hard to see but he put it there for a reason. He put this, these two little strips of the frame and the liner there for a reason. So the outside, this to leftmost part of this strip on the left hand side of the screen, that's wood. Okay. A lot of frames are made of wood. Actually, well, yeah, a lot of them used to be. Now it's more like plastic or particle board or whatever. But the, the, the outside of the frame is, is that brown wood color. Okay the inside also wood but wood that has been uh, painted gold or gold leafed okay remember don't forget um this this is the pacific northwest logging country wood everywhere um you know what did i say this log <sighs> we're gonna have fun with this symbolism i can tell you that right now so he shows a little bit of it not enough for you to like, you know, people who are not observant, 
Not enough for these people who are not observant to realize it. You know, like you could, you could say like, why doesn't he just focus on like the whole photograph? Like whether he wants to include the frame or not is whatever, but he could cut away these edges, you know, like the crusts of a sandwich. He could cut that off, but he didn't. He left this little thing here. And the fo- and the photo is not like being viewed. It's being viewed at an angle. Plus, we can see a little bit of this frame. The outside is wood. The liner is um, gold leafed wood. Oof. Building, constructing narratives, constructing the way we live. The parallels between the items, objects, things that are a part of the, you know, uh, building industry and the the effects they have on people's lives and civilization and culture and societies and communities and whatever and all the misery in the world that the people um, who are represented by the characters in this show have brought on, on humankind. David 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 has put those people squarely, David Lynch has put those people squarely in his crosshairs. So did Stanley Kubrick. So did so have a lot of great artists. And he said, oh no, you know, you've been hurting people for too long. Now I'm going to tell everybody in my own special way. And that's why nobody can figure out Twin Peaks, because they're not thinking in the right direction. And they're not thinking creatively. And I don't, I don't think I'm a special person by any stretch of the imagination. No, but I do have an education in like, you know, analyzing images and, and finding the messages, the whatever that are, that are a part of art or, or just images in general. That's why I think I can do a better job than a lot of the people that I've seen, you know, not tooting my own horn. I don't think I have a horn to toot, but um, you know, this, I think I'm just letting you know, this is why I think I do this a little bit differently than other people. So you guys, I said what I had to say. You're looking at Venus incarnate right here. Okay. Um, and I'll try to get to the first episode. I think I'm going to have to go and watch it on Amazon prime or something. I don't know if it's on Netflix Sweet mother of pearl, help help us all. Um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I'll get to it. Hope you all enjoy it. I'll try to get through the first episode soon enough so I can like break it down for you and break down the symbolism and break down what David Lynch is really trying to say. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Once again, you all uh going to reiterate my church announcements. Uh... <laughs> returning viewers, thank you for returning. New viewers, thank you for being new. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. And every single last one of you, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the videos. If you know anybody who might like this nonsense, let them know. Tell them. Um, and please don't forget to hit that notification bell. So with all that being said, um, I can't wait to read the comments. Uh, you know, if you have any suggestions for the way you want me to do this review series of Twin Peaks, the original two seasons, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Let me know what your suggestions or ideas are. I will consider them. Um, so you all have a lovely week. I will be back with more videos. Have a lovely week. And until next time, until I find yet another reason to talk at you, I'm going to go ahead and bid you. Bye-bye. So, bye-bye, everybody.